Well, hello there, Jackie Holland here in Sherman, Texas. Happy New Year! We're almost there. Pray that you're having a blessed and a wonderful day. And I'm believing, just like you are, that the better days are ahead. But you know, we don't have to discount and overlook the blessings that we had in the past years. God's blessed us. We didn't get this far by accident. We didn't get this far out of our... Uh, great <laughs> wisdom or even humanity we got here by the grace of god and god got us here in one piece and some of you are struggling and some of you are victorious some of you will be celebrating some of you will be resting in your pajamas sound asleep <laughs> and and uh, let's face it they're already having new years in other places i've been watching it today so happy new year <laughs> God has got great plans for you. He said, I know the plans that I have for you, and they're for good and not for evil. They're plans to give you hope and a future and, a, and an expected end. God wants to bless you. I believe that with all my heart. You say, yeah, but bad things are happening. I said, God wants to bless you. You say, yeah, but I've, 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 lost, my, I've lost my stock. My stock went down. Well, you're alive. You're here. You have another chance. You got it. You got another ten dollars you can invest. Well, you know what? Don't give up. Don't quit trying. Don't quit believing. God is still on His throne. He gives you wisdom. He gives you insight, and He gives you direction. But you know what? The saddest thing, I guess, in the world, is the fact to think that somebody would have everything, everything, tangible, and yet have nothing. They, they, they have everything. They have cars, homes. They can travel anywhere. They have people hanging on them, waiting on them hand and foot, catering to their every need. But you know, you let that same person get really sick or a loved one get really sick and they're trying to get help for them and, and get them well, they realize there's, no, there's really not enough amount of money when it comes right down to it, we need the help and the mercy of God, and we need the great physician to get us through. And the Lord is the great physician. This has been a hard year, but we, I've had several hard years, quite a few hard years, quite a few hard years. And many of you have been praying for your kids or your grandkids for a long, long time, and I'm just saying, just keep on believing. Don't ever, ever, ever give up. There's hope. And if God puts somebody on your heart to pray for them and to, to bless them, you do it in Jesus' name. You know, I've been thinking about Jerry Jones. There's a picture. My son has a picture of himself with Jerry Jones from some, well, I guess uh, probably in the box part or, or somewhere uh, a few, several years ago. And uh, I always love that picture of he and Jerry Jones. And I love our cowboys. Well, Hello, I want, I, my son just died. Here's his, here's his obituary. It's been four months and about two more days on the fourth, it'll be four months. Can't believe it's gone by so fast. Can't believe it. And he didn't take that Harley with him. He went, he went naked into the world. We come into the world and naked we leave. So basically they clothed him, put something on that I'd taken up there, but he left with nothing. But he did leave with his faith. He had, the moment he died, he was with the Lord. Because it said to be absent, absent from the body is to be present with the Lord when you're a Christian. And I don't know Jerry Jones' status, but I would just say this and I would say it openly. Just in case somebody knows him, you can let him know that there's a low, old lady that's almost, I'll be 78 here in about two weeks. But every day, really at least twice a day, I walked by that picture of my son with Jerry Jones and God put it on my heart to pray for Jerry Jones. And I don't know his situation with the Lord, but I don't have to know it. I just pray that Jerry Jones will be in heaven one of these days when he passes away, when his time has come. Because he could win the Super Bowl, he can have all these accolades and all these wonderful things and be a great, great man and just have everything. But if he didn't have the Lord, he wouldn't have anything. So I'm not gonna let go of Jerry Jones. I'm gonna pray that Jerry Jones, and maybe he already does, I hope to God he does, but if not, I'm gonna pray that he knows Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, and that he'll be right up there along with Howard and 
so many of your loved ones that have gone on before us, <laughs> no matter what team you're on. See, it's Team Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the Alpha and he's the Omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. So whatever we think we can do, we do it. We do it with all our might. And with the help of God, we, we do accomplish a lot of things. But I can tell you this, when it was time for my son to leave this world, it happened. And it happened in such a strange way. He had been sick for a long time with Crohn's disease and been in and out of the hospital for many years. And, um, but oddly enough, he died right here in, in the house, with the same house I'm in. And I wound up being maybe right here when he was laying in, well, obviously he was in his room. He had, because we had split our house into a duplex because he took care of me because I have cancer and I have had for 10 years. He's kept me alive. <laughs> Boy, he's got me through some tough time. Then that last, this last year though, I, I got him all, all of a sudden the table started turning and the care, care, the person that was getting the care started giving the care and he really struggled. Col colitis, cellulitis, Crohn's and uh, he was so sick. And then one day, September 4th, came home. Went on about my business and my, my side of my duplex of the house. <laughs> and did not even know that laying in the other room was my baby. Gone. Did he have a stroke? Did he have an aneurysm? Did he have a heart attack? I don't know. We were moving a lot of things around. He was doing a whole lot of changing, changes for me in the house. And he had a lot of stuff stacked up there in his room. And he may have passed out, but I do know he hit his head on, looked like maybe some little antlers, deer antlers. We, we, we love deer antlers and deer ants and all that stuff. And he had gash a hold his head, but they said that's not what killed him. So he probably had, to, he probably had, they said he probably had a heart attack, so natural causes, but he suffered so much. We had spent all our money. We had spent everything we had. And a few people would come through along the way and send help. And God only knows how we needed it. Oh, my Lord. But when it came time and my son passed away, there was no insurance. There was no burial. There was nothing set aside for him. There was no plot, no family plot. There was nothing. I'm just a, I'm just a, a woman in ministry. And he was trying to help me succeed and stay alive. Oh, I had a good son. I miss him. But you know what? His time was up. His job was up. He's at rest. He's at peace. But you know what happened? One of the one of the cousins came through and did the, a, a, a GoFundMe page. My website was down and uh, and it went down the very same week, which was crazy, so that people couldn't just go to the website and donate. And um, <laughs> But she did a GoFundMe, and there was enough money that came in that I could do the funeral. God provided. I felt like the Lord said right off the bat, "Do not even, don't, don't, uh, don't stress about it. Don't worry about it at all." And I'm a member of Gateway Church in South Lake. I love my church. I was on staff with Mark Job and and Pastor Tommy Briggs and different ones there for 15 years at Restoration Church in Ulysses. And you know, all of our lives just kind of changed. We went different ways here at Gateway. But I am a member there. But you know, I don't. For some reason, I was so beat down. I was so beat down, and so I, I didn't even call them. I didn't even call them. I, I, I just, I guess, I just thought things would work out. I don't know, because I heard the Lord say it's going to be all right. And during the service, during the service, I looked up, and there it was Mark and Sandy Job from Gateway Church. They. They blessed and paid towards the, the funeral, but they brought love and honor. And he used to be Howard's uh, youth pastor. And they're my friends. And they're my, my brothers and sisters of the Lord. They're pastors. That's my church. My church came to me and I didn't even have to beg. I didn't have to plead. And I thank God for that. And so Howard's funeral was paid for. That was a blessing. So see, we worry about too much. 
much to do about nothing. You do what you can, you prepare, you know, you do whatever. It's gray hair or something else. Uh, but you just go forward. God will provide. He will provide. And I'm not going to beg. I don't feel like the Lord would have me beg. I feel like it says, you know, the Lord goes before you and he goes behind you. I feel like you all know me well enough to know if, you, if the Lord puts on your heart to bless whosoever will outreach ministries, you will do it. It's a nonprofit. If he doesn't, then that's because he has other, you're doing other things. I'm just one little fish in the pond. But know this, I will be active until the day God takes me home. I just completed some courses there at, at the bottom prison for men for 11 weeks. We did the Battlefield of Mine series. That was a blessed time, and I told them that actually they were my, they were my support group. <laughs> they were my, we shared, and they shared, and we understood each other. We knew, uh, we knew, this hair or something else. We knew what the other was feeling, because they get the calls, they get the calls from loved ones, and they can't go home, or they can't provide for them, and it's very, very sad. I, I have a broken heart. I want to do something. I want to start something. I want to do this. Whosoever Will Outreach Ministries is a beautiful ministry. It started really when, when my own son, who passed away, Howard, and Howard, Howard and his friend, but Howard was eating some grapes, and I said, where did you get those grapes? And he said, they're throwing it away. They're at that specialty store in Colleyville. That day we got the food out. That way, that day the ministry started. I call the ministry widow's might <laughs> and it later changed to the care ministry because the church brought me on board and we had a huge ministry that fed thousands of people but the lord raised up whosoever will and one time i remember being in church look at my hair it's just falling down and uh it's just falling down and i and i remember the lord saying to me uh whosoever will take care of you <laughs> and we were praising the Lord, singing, having a good time. But I heard that. See, he said, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. The voice of a stranger, they'll not follow. I heard him say, whosoever will, take, will take care of you. I'm like, huh. And I, I didn't really, I mean, I, I didn't really think through it. I didn't work through that at all. However, that has come to my mind more than once. And I've known. I'm a whosoever, and so are you. A whosoever will take care of me. God will take care of me. He uses, just like I didn't have to go and beg for my church to help me, they came forward and they did it willingly, lovingly, openly. I thank God for Pastor Robert Morris. Oh God, thank you Lord for that church. Thank you. Thank you for Mark and Sandy Job for just being obedient and coming in and bringing love and support and care. And then, not long after that, they had a widow's celebration there for Christmas. I was think, looking at it and thinking, oh, I sure, sure would like to be there and be a part of that. But I think that was that. And then Sandy sent me a little note and she said, we want to bless you because we feel like you are a widow, a genuine widow. And I've been alone, single for 35 years and I've been in full-time ministry for 35 years. <laughs> and uh, my husband left me and divorced me, so that was a dead thing. And uh, my first husband, I was married before he died. He was, so I'm, I'm in the Lord's hands, but he said that, you know, he, we're not like the widows that are thrown away. He'll, he brings us back in and he covers us. So I, I don't feel a bit sorry for myself. I am wondering about this hair what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> Getting old is, is another challenge altogether. But I pray I will be graceful, <laughs> great, grateful and graceful <laughs> through the process. And that's what we have to hope for. Through the process and the challenges of life that we give God glory and honor and praise. Now, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to end invite you to join me right now and ask Jesus to save your soul.
Because just like I said, I'm praying for Jerry Jones to be saved. If he's not, if he's if he's not, he's just gonna he just he's getting prayer. It doesn't matter. He's getting prayer at least twice a day from me. <laughs> and because um, it's on my heart, unless the Lord said, okay, don't. Well, I can't imagine the Lord not not wanting me to pray for him. He's right there in that same picture with my son, and he told me that, so I'm gonna do it. So. I don't know what he's going through, but I don't know what you're going through. I know this. No matter how big you are, you're not too big, you can't fall. No matter how low you are, there's no heights that you can't go if God is with you. If God is for you, who can be against you? But all have sinned and all have come short. We all need the Lord. We're all whosoever's. <laughs> Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord, he said, will be saved. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him, would not perish, but have everlasting life. You're a whosoever, I'm a whosoever. Say, Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you everything. All that I am or ever hope to be. I'm sorry for my sins, please forgive me. Cleanse my heart, wash me, heal me, deliver me, set me free. Show me the way I need to go and help me to walk in it. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and show me how to walk in the way of righteousness. I give you everything. And that includes my sins, addictions, bad, good, bad, and ugly. I give it all to you, Lord. I, I, I don't want it. And you said, cast all your cares on me because I care for you. So you said bring them to you. So we're laying them down at your feet right now, Lord, in Jesus' name, by faith. Now, Lord, bless my friends. Send somebody to speak to them and talk to them and encourage them along the way. And bless them. Bless them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Heal your body. Heal our land. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Love your neighbor. Love God. With all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. Your neighbors yourself. I love you. Happy New Year. It's going to be great. It's going to be a good one. And so, like I say, it's not... That 2023 20, was so bad, even though we we lost beloved people and bad things happened. It's life. Life happens. So life's not going to stop happening just because the year changes. It's already 2024 20, in other places. So Happy New Year. God bless you.